Hello, I'm Helen, also known as Curious Handmade. I design knitting patterns and have an audio podcast under the name Curious Handmade on iTunes. And uh, yeah, pretty much you can find me everywhere as Curious Handmade on Instagram, Facebook, social media generally, <laughs> my website. And uh, yeah, so I wanted to uh, do this video today because I have a lot to catch up with you on, including some recent designs, uh, the recent Curious Handmade retreat we had up in Cumbria, as well as the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So lots to talk to you about and show you. And I wanted to do this um, before I go away on Friday. I am going to the US for the Knitting Pipeline Georgia retreat which is the third year I'll be going to this retreat. And so I thought I better record and show you all this stuff, A, so I can put it away and, uh, and, and or use it and or um, in one case, uh, rip it back, <laughs> which I'll talk to you more about in a minute. Um, and also because if I, if I don't do it now, then it's going to be so long in the future that it's all going to be old news and I'll probably give up trying to tell you about it. So I am wearing uh, the Cave Point uh, shawl by Paula Emmons Beasley who is knitting pipeline and um, yeah I'm kind of getting in the mood for the for the next retreat with my uh, winging it <laughs> jersey that I love. It's from a brand called Family I think um, they've got two Instagram accounts. I always get confused, but it's family as in spelt F-M-L-Y, like cool without the vowels. Um, and yeah, they do really fun, fun printed shirts. Um, and a lot of the proceeds goes to charity as well um, for kids. So it's a, it's a great um, brand to support. Um, and uh, people always comment, it's a real conversation starter, this this um, this top I find. Anyway, even though it's not knitted. Um, so I think I'll start with uh, a couple of new designs. I'll probably talk about some new designs and then talk about um, the retreat and Edinburgh. And if you're not wanting to get enabled by um, purchases, then perhaps you can just watch the first bit and turn off for the yarn haul part. <laughs> um, I'm quite conscious of um, talking about a lot of purchases because we had a lot of conversations at the retreat about what people do and don't like so much in podcasts. And some people said that they deliberately don't watch certain podcasts because they don't want to be enabled to buy a lot of yarn at the moment so I thought that was super interesting um, and I'm I know that I'm quite guilty of a buying quite a bit of yarn and B you know enabling people so I it made me a lot more conscious about that actually um, I don't know that I'll change that much in what I talk about but it has made me think about it a little bit more maybe in terms of how I structure the podcast so um, you know you can choose to watch or not, <laughs> but um, it'll probably be sp sprinkled through the show, to be honest, anyway. Um, so uh, first of all, um, we've just wrapped up the um, Snowmelt Mystery Knit Along, and I'm just going to show this quickly. You've probably seen this uh, before, but this is the shawl, the final shawl, um, just revealing it after since all the clues have been released and um, I got super inspired by this yarn um, it is from La Bienname it's their singles base and this particular colorway it's three different skeins three different colors and it's called the Magellan Fade Speckle that's not right the Magellan Speckle Fade kit so this is one colour through here and then there's a speckle with more um, pink in it and a speckle with more blue in it. Uh, so I had a lot of fun with that. 
um, creating stripes and different combinations. And I just wanted to thank people for their amazing shawls. Um, I have utterly been blown away by people's uh, shawls and their participation in the Mystery Knit Along. Um, and I can't, I can't really express just how wonderful it was and how much fun it was, but really had a lot of fun with this Mystery Knit Along. And I hope everybody who participated did as well. Uh, so yeah, so that's now available as um, a full pattern on Ravelry. And if you're interested in seeing what other color, color combinations people have used, you, there's a finished object thread which is dedicated to just finished shawls. There's a few, um, you know, congratula congratulatory comments in there from other people on the shawls, but mostly it's just pictures of the finished object. So that's really fun to look at to see uh, the colors people chose and how they all came together. Um, so that was a big project um, through January and February. Um, and as I said on the podcast, it was so nice to see some of the finished shawls at Edinburgh and at the retreat. Um, this shawl was actually inspired by some of the um, wonderful people who come to the retreat, uh, including uh, my test knitter Dab, Tink Hickman, Danny, from, um, Danny of the Little Bobbins podcast, um, as well as Amanda, Paula, um, I don't want to forget anybody, uh, Kim, who's Squimbalina, she has a podcast as well. Um, and we were chatting about this at the Christmas party and they basically uh, sort of gave me a challenge to design a shawl with certain requirements, uh, which included stripes, speckles, three colours, using up most of the skein, um, lace but not too difficult, lots of garter stitch, lots of relaxing knitting, um, and and uh, probably a few other things that I've forgotten, but oh, not too many ends to weave in was another <laughs> was another request. So I um, really enjoyed working with those sort of positive constraints. Uh, it kind of I find sometimes it really helps to have those those kind of um, guidelines to work with. So that was really fun, and the design um, actually came came out <laughs> flowed quite quite easily. I think partly because um, I'd been mulling over um, what they what the girls wanted in a shawl. So yeah, so and I think they I think they liked the end result. So that was really good. Um, and for the retreat, I also um, I decided that I wanted to have something to offer at the mini market. And I so I thought, well, I better do a new design because uh, often if you know people have seen the designs before they might have them or um, you know I just thought it would be fun to have something new and fresh and so um, not that long before the retreat I decided that I would do um, a sock kit and I was really inspired by spring and um, looking forward to spring a lot. And so I designed the apple blossom socks. And um, just before I went on holiday, I uh, got in touch with Jane from Hedgerow Yarn. And I said, I'm thinking about doing a spring inspired um, design for some socks. And uh, what do you think about a, a really fresh colorway? And so, um, Jane, I worked with for the um, for the vintage fairy light uh, socks that uh, Danny and I put together for the kits before Christmas, and so she she's just amazing. She said, "Oh yes, okay, um, I've got some ideas," <laughs> and so she created this gorgeous yarn um, in the apple blossom colorway. And um, it's just really pretty, uh, fresh, spring-like speckles on a cream base. And I've actually just received uh, some skeins in the post 
um, just before I recorded, uh, the, d the doorbell rang and it was a parcel of this yarn because I'm taking a, um, a few of the kits over to Georgia um, because they have a, a mini market there as well. So um, I, it's quite fun to be able to sell something other than patterns. So, um, so I commissioned some of the yarn and um, yeah. And um, yeah, so I had um, so the kits available for the mini market and the sock pattern is available on Ravelry. It's a super um, simple uh, socks, uh, quite a traditional heel flap and gusset design, a simple uh, lace repeat on the leg. So it's pretty, um, it's pretty fast. I, I'd like to think it's also quite potato chippy because there's five rounds and then you do the eyelet round here. And so you're kind of, well, I um, like to get to the next eyelet round and, you know, just keep, it keeps me going. Um, and it's just a, a standard, I think it, you'd say it was a wedge, a wedge toe on these. Um, yes, and that's how they, and that's how the yarn knits up. So uh, we did have um, some kits available um, in the Hedgerow Etsy shop last week. They sold very quickly. We had 30, which we thought was quite a lot, but um, they sold pretty quickly. So uh, Jane and I decided to do one more update. Um, and so I've put together the booklets and the um, gift bags that they come in and and uh, she's dyeing up some more yarn for that. So that'll be this weekend. And so if you're wanting to get a, a kit, I know that a lot of people were disappointed. So um, there will be some more, um, not heaps because each of these skeins is dyed individually um, because of the, the speckles. I don't know much about dyeing techniques, but Jane said that, that she has to dye each of them one by one, which makes them quite labor intensive um, and quite special. I guess that's why they're so special. Um, so that's why we can't, you know, churn them out in great quantities. Um, but yeah, we'll have some more for you this weekend. And that will be at the Hedro Yarns Etsy, Etsy shop. So keep an eye out there for exact dates and times or on her Instagram account. Aren't these sock blockers awesome? They're from a um, Etsy seller in in Europe. <laughs> I can't remember where, and I can't remember the name. I'm sorry. Um, I'll try and dig it out and put a link. But they're so cute. I'll just show you the rest. They're more autumnal than spring, but um, still gorgeous, aren't they? Mushrooms, leaves, and squirrel. Just pretty cute. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, um, yeah, so on the retreat, uh, I had another design for attendees and this was the, the sort of the retreat design, um, uh, for all of the three retreats that I've organized with, um, my friend Meta, we've had a, a design. Um, they've been in the fiber company yarn that crinkly paper out of the way <laughs> and this time I designed uh, the Livia kerchief um, I was working with uh, a new yarn from the fiber company called Luma and it's uh, really gorgeous I've got some here because um, I'm gonna take some of these over to Georgia as well I thought I'll just um, see if anybody wants um, a Levia kit. So um, I'm going to take these with me and uh, this yarn is wonderful. It's um, a blend of cotton, organic cotton, linen, merino and silk. So it's got a really nice blend of plant and animal fibers. These are the two colors I used in my sample and I don't have the sample with me because that's gone to a trade show in Germany um, with the Fiberco uh, this weekend and um, 
so I can't show you the, the actual sample, but um, this is Blanca and Ciel um, colors. I just love these colors together. So that really inspired the design. I wanted to do something nautical and striped and spring-like and really fun. Um, and so because I wanted to um, design something with the two skeins, so 50 gram, 50 gram skeins of DK weight, and so it's 125 meters per, per hank, 137 yards. Um, so I decided rather than doing a full shawl, I would do a, a kerchief. So it's <laughs> point to the back. So it's it's um, joined in the back. So you'd kind of knit the first section as a shawl and then join in the round towards the border and then it's knit in the round. So it goes on over your head and sits sits like a cowl more so than a shawl, but it looks like a shawl at the front if you wear it like that. Um, so yeah, so it's a fun it's a fun little design. It's really quick to knit. Um, attendees, some of them knit it in a couple of evenings at the retreat. Uh, so it's a super fast uh, little project if you're looking for something uh, something fun and fast to do. Um, and then some of the other colours. These are the colours that uh, Danny in little, on the Little Bobbins podcast chose. She showed these colours. And this is uh, Flax and Flamingo. And I think Flamingo is just gorgeous. And I think it also goes quite nicely with the with this one, the CL, oh no, that's not right, the Blanca. CL is the blue. Uh, and then there's a darker blue, which is the Breton colorway. Slightly more of a tealy, a dark teal. And I really liked this one as well. This is called Sangria. So isn't that gorgeous? I quite like a, a pullover in that, I think. One of these days. So yeah, so I think that these, um, I've just sort of got a, a selection of neutrals and um, pretty colours to take. Uh, so I'll have a, a couple of those for the, the Georgia um, mini market. And as part of the gift for attendees, we uh, had these baskets um, in previous retreats, we've had handmade um, project bags, and this time we decided to do something different. I talked to my friend Jan, who has an um, online marketplace called the So Just Shop, and uh, it's basically supporting women entrepreneurs in developing countries or you know poorer countries. This is from Kenya, um, and it's woven in. Kasigal, Kasigal, um, one of Kenya's most popular nature reserves with beautiful boab trees, countless cows, and ten villages dotted around the huge flat topped Mount Kasigal. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that. So it's um, helping support uh, the weavers who are women and breadwinners for the family, and this helps um, support their families. So uh, we were able to um, give attendees one of these each and all different colorways, colorways, all different colors. I guess they are colorways. Uh, so that was really fun. So attendees could choose their basket in a fun color and um, matching or yarn that they liked um, because Daphne brought uh, all the different colorways with extras uh, so that people could choose what color luma they would like um, to have for their gift. So huge, huge thank you to So Just Shop and the Fiber Co for, um, for the, sponsoring the gifts for the latest Country House Retreat. And uh, that, was, that was just really fun, um, fun to do. Um, and then just, um, this might be a little bit enabling, but, um, we had a, a mini market at the retreat and, um, Danny from Little Bobbins had some beautiful bags there 
And I also mentioned on the podcast, the audio podcast, that I purchased a couple of her lavender bags, lavender sachets. Um, I love lavender. These smell so beautiful. She had these little gift sets. Um, let me just take off this to show you. How cute is that? And a matching plain one. So lovely. And she also had made <laughs> so stinking cute hexies. Um, so these are all hand stitched. Quite incredible. I think um, so beautiful. They, they're so little and cute. Um, I'm going to keep one of these in my various project bags um, for, for projects that I have on the go. Um, because they're, they're too, too pretty to stash away in a knickers drawer, aren't they? Um, so I was very, very happy with that little purchase. Um, and Julie from Suffolk Socks, she has a, an online shop called Suffolk Socks, which is dedicated to sock knitting and sock yarn. She had some kits there, so we did a swap for, um, the Apple Blossom kit for the School Socks Rock kit. Um, which came in a great little gorgeous tote with a, with a cute little decoration on it. And um, Julie had collaborated with Maya from the Wool Barn to have some, some yarn. And I don't have the pattern. I don't know what I've done with that. I think I've put that away to, for a future knitting project. But um, Julie had designed three socks all in one pattern called School Socks Rock and had a colorway designed for each term. So there's three, three socks, one to represent each school term. In the UK, we have three terms per year. Uh, summer, what is it? Hang on, autumn, start with autumn and September. Autumn, spring, and then summer. So we're just coming to the end of the spring term here this week in the UK. Uh, so, yeah, so this is the yarn that I got in my kit, which is Summer. And I think that's so dreamy. The light in here isn't the best today, it's very overcast. Um, so I'm not sure if these colours are really displaying particularly accurately, but I think they're okay. Uh, so I think that is super gorgeous. Kind of peachy pink uh, with some some navy pink speckles. I can't wait to knit this actually. I'm wondering if I cast this on next, even though it's not summer yet. Oh, so that's really pretty. And there was also this little notebook in the kit as well. Really cute for the, I think the school, the school theme, just a plain notebook, lovely. So thanks Julie, it was fun doing a little swap <laughs> for, our, for our sock kits. And I also, I think, I think made one more purchase, which was um, this lovely bag from Nicola, who's Bumble Stitches. Nicola has a podcast, I think it's called Bumble Stitches Podcast. Um, she attended the retreat for the first time and brought some project bags um, I think Danny showed this one on hers. She got the same one as me. Um, she just had two of these. I just love these prints. I'm a sucker for floral prints on fabric. Um, really love, really love it. She also had some really pretty pink blousy blooms as well that was, um, I was very tempted by. Uh, but I just like the sort of the drama and, and strength of these colours. So, uh, yeah, so I purchased that and I think that's probably everything I purchased at the mini market. <clears throat> I did have some, one other thing to show you, or maybe two. Um, a workshop we had at the retreat was, uh, Introduction to Linen by Elizabeth Doherty. And Elizabeth attended the retreat at this time last year and then, uh, this year was coming back and I asked her if she would like to do a workshop for attendees. So she suggested 
um, talking about linen and brought us some wonderful um, yarn from Quince & Co. Quince & Co's Farrow, uh, which is 100% organic linen. And I chose this colour. She had all the colours from Sparrow, which was just delightful to see. And um, you can see one of the other colourways here that is my provisional cast on. I've um, She was teaching us about linen and had a pattern called, it's called the Warm Springs Bath Mitt. And it's a lovely pattern, super sophisticated. Uh, super simple, just a, a simple little bath mitt, but really effective. Um, I've taken mine off the needles because I I didn't have the right size needles with me and it was coming out way too small. I don't think it would even fit on my, on my hand properly and it was just too uncomfortable to knit at that gauge. So I'm going to pull this out and um, do it again in the proper needle size. Uh, so that was very fun. This colour is called Truffle. Um, it's just lovely. It would be um, very lovely to have a top in this colourway, I think. Um, it's kind of got, um, uh, what would you call it? It's kind of a taupe colour, but sort of has a purple, I don't know, purple undertones to it perhaps. Depends on the light, I think. You, it's one of those colours that really looks different in different lights, but uh, so yes, um, and one more thing that I wanted to show you, which was a beautiful gift from Deb. Um, Deb um, bought me this skein of Life in the Long Grass, and it's called Storyteller. So I just thought I'd show you that. So thank you, Deb. She bought it at um, Unravel, which is a festival in Fana Maltings, uh, shortly before the retreat, uh, which I couldn't go to. So. I really like that speckle there, just this this bit here. I'm really wondering whether to um, to knit a shawl or socks from this. I think I'd have to see what it's like when it's in a ball to get the, a feel for how the colours look, but I'm kind of feeling like, I don't know, I kind of want it near my face rather than on my feet. <laughs> we'll see. Could be nice in a find your fade. I always think that about pretty skeins these days. Oh, that would be nice to find your fade. Not that I'll ever have time to knit that, but um, maybe, maybe. I'm not giving up hope yet. <laughs> so, so that was uh, the retreat. And oh, I'll just show you um, a project that I'm working on at the moment. Well, of well, I've got it here. This is the Apple Blossom Socks um, and this is uh, Turtle Pearl Yarn in the City Girl colorway. This was a gift from my friend Tracy and uh, she gave this to me last summer when she was in London and <clears throat> so I decided this would be a lovely March colorway because I think it just looks like crocuses um, and uh, I was trying to finish this within the month of March for the Grocery Girls Sock Bash March socks. Uh, but only a couple of days of the month left. So if I didn't do anything except knit on these, I could probably finish them. My needle's coming out. That's not a good look. <laughs> Unless I unravel them completely first. Uh, so, um, but that's not going to happen because I'm getting ready to go on a trip and trying to get a lot of work done before I go. So I think it's going to be, sadly, I was pretty determined to finish these within the month, but I think sadly, probably unrealistic. Um, this month again, I had grand plans for February. Sorry, I'm just putting stitches back on the needles before I lose the whole thing. Uh, grand plans for February. I chose some gorgeous yarn from my friend, Cast On Cast Off, um, for in a Valentine's inspired colourway, and I really didn't get far with those at all. Um, and now I'm I'm failing on on March, but that's okay. 
I'm okay about it. <laughs> it's just a bit of fun. Um, the Grocery Girls did say on their most recent episode that you are allowed to knit two second socks and that will count as a pair if you knit them both within a month. So perhaps I can catch up one month on a few second socks and um, have an entry for that month. We'll see. Uh, so um, something else that really special that I wanted to show you was a gift and uh, last year my friend Susan who's Kismet on Ravelry um, we we collaborated on the uh, handmade wardrobe challenge and I think it was the year before actually that I launched that on on the podcast and uh, yeah she collaborated with with me on that she kind of came up with the idea and contacted me to see if I'd be interested in in doing it with her, which I was. And so we um, we hosted that challenge and then Susan came to last year's Curious, ha um, Curious Handmade Country House Retreat, which was the first one. And unfortunately she couldn't come back this year, but she sent me the most unbelievable gift um, because she couldn't come. So this is uh, an embroidery cross stitch and it says only the curious have something to find and this is a representation of the country house where we have the retreat. Uh, it's got bees on the, the ties, um, really lovely um, text on the fabric inside. And, um, yeah, I, I kind of feel a bit teary when I think about this beautiful gift. Uh, I just, I think it's so artistic, so creative. It's just so beautiful. And thank you, Susan. Um, it means a lot to me to be given something like that, that I know that would have taken uh, so much time. And it's got, just got so much thought and personal meaning to it. Uh, so it's quite special. I just wanted to share that and show it off um, and um, and thank Susan publicly for that because it's just so beautiful. Uh, how are we going for time? Half an hour. Let me have a sip of tea before it gets too cold. It's just a builder's brew, nothing special. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. So I think I'll uh, show you a few things from Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Um, I probably won't go through everything because I have quite a few things to show you, but I'll, I'll just um, maybe highlight a few fun things. So the first thing I wanted to show you, um, each year at Edinburgh, they um, are really good at building up traditions around this festival, the organisers, Joe and Mika. Uh, I think this is the third or fourth year. I think there was one that they did as a sort of trial um, and then had a year off and then sort of, so for the last three years it's been in the same venue and the same format. Um, but I'm not sure if they would say that this was the third or third year or fourth year. But uh, since I've been going, which is the last three years, uh, Shetland Wool Week has launched their um, promotion for the festival, which is going to happen in September this year, and have um, announced the patron for the festival, who is a, a designer. And this year, the patron is Gudrun Johnston. Let me get that right, Johnston, with a T. Uh, she's designed this hat called the Booster Beanie. Let's see if that's right as well. The Booster Beanie. Uh, and it's obviously a colour work 
the cold for yarn is Jamison and Smith two ply, uh, two ply jumper weight, which is a four ply fingering weight, hundred percent Shetland wool, of course, and uh, this is the the cover. Love the graphical design of this. And while I was at the festival, I had already purchased um, this yarn from Tuku Wool. It's a Finnish yarn. Uh, fairly new, I think. Um, I don't know when they sort of started, but um, I think it's a relatively new brand. So this is 100% Finnish wool, and I really loved the colours. Um, and without having knit it, it does feel quite similar to um, to the Shetland wool. Maybe not quite as sticky. I don't know if that's a technical term, but it's a little bit, maybe a little bit softer than Shetland, um, perhaps. But uh, yeah, so I had purchased these just thinking that they looked pretty together and that I wanted to um, try this different um, Finnish wool. Uh, and then when I saw the hat pattern, I thought it would be perfect for the booster beanie. I think that's going to be really lovely because Gudrun had uh, three samples that are in the pattern in different colors. Um, there, I think. Uh, and then on the table where she was um, standing with the Shetland Wool Week stand, uh, there was another sample which was kind of in these colours. Uh, so that was the one that sort of jumped out to me the most because um, it's sort of my, my favourite colours. <coughs> and that was what made me realise that actually I had just bought that, that set of colours. So anyway, I wanted to show you that because uh, it's just such a feature of Edinburgh Yarn Festival, these... Um, Shetland Wool Week pattern. So you'll probably know um, the Barbel hat, of course, uh, from two years ago, and the Croft Hoose hat from last year. Sorry, just had to pause for an absolute coughing fit. Uh, so yeah, so the Croft Hoose hat from last year by Ella Gordon. And I've mentioned Ella's um, podcast on my audio podcast before. Um, and I did see her at Edinburgh Yarn Festival but she's kind of on her way somewhere and I didn't get a chance to say hello, which I was a bit sad about because I am a big fan. So hi Ella, um, I'm sure she's not watching this, but um, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was, I, I saw her, <laughs> didn't get to say hello, but um, I did get to say hello to Gudrun, uh, which was lovely um, and uh, have, a, have a little chat about the design with her. But of course uh, she was super busy Um, and then a couple of other purchases. Uh, I bought this uh, gorgeous cowl that's handmade by Woolen Flower, uh, who's Jules, Julia Billings. And uh, she's an Aussie, she's based in Glasgow at the moment. And I really, really love this. I don't know if you can see, but it's sort of like the, um, it's kind of semi-solid color in the background so that's probably not going to be worn much until next winter now but <clears throat> come next winter it will be worn a lot uh, it's lovely soft Shetland wool um, <clears throat> and I spoke about Old Maiden Art having their 10 year anniversary this is called Hebridean this colorway so I just wanted to buy one one skein from her this is uh, a superwash merino 20% bamboo blend. Um, I just thought that was beautiful. Um, it just caught my eye. You know when something just catches your eye from across across the room? Love at first sight. And uh, the book um, from Old Maid and Art to celebrate the 10 year anniversary with lots of beautiful designs in that. <coughs> oh 
got a bit of a cough. I also bought um, just two scans, it was quite restrained, of uh, Jared Flood's Brooklyn Tweed Arbor, which is 100% American Taji wool. I don't really know what the properties of that are, but it feels quite, um, quite springy uh, and, yeah, quite bouncy. Um, so I think it'd be really nice to net with. <clears throat> I did pull this up thinking that I was going to um, to do a swatch for a potential garment. It's a DK weight, and I was thinking about um, Hohe Locatelli's Rhapsody and Cables. Uh, this is the tincture colour, and I had this problem on the podcast that I couldn't remember. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Driftwood. This one's driftwood. So, um, yeah, I really like that colour. It's a putty kind of taupey colour as well, but a lot lighter than the, than the other one. And... Um, I just wanted to mention um, this new yarn from Blacker, which is Samite. I did a review of this on the podcast, and <clears throat> uh <-huh>. <laughs> <clears throat> I did some some swatches. It's got a quite a papery feel to it. Um, very light, very light and and soft. Um, I think it was. Uh, Eric from the Sticks Plus Twine podcast was saying that he really liked it because it has the silk content without being shiny. Um, so for men's um, garments and accessories, that makes it quite nice because he said he doesn't usually like um, yarns with a silk content because they're often shiny. But this is very matte. This colorway is called Wild Bees Hum. Which I think is fabulous. Uh, so it's got 20% special Ahamisa silk and um, a blend of um, special special wool in that. So this was actually a gift for um, podcasters. Uh, if you participated in the podcaster lounge, uh, Blacker sponsored the podcast lounge and gave us a skein of our choice uh, from the stand. So I chose this one really nice <clears throat> and then the other big purchase the main main purchase actually uh, I bought a sweater quantity of the Azolda blend number one and this is batch number three and it's merino Polworth and swabbles and it's undyed it's a worsted spun three plies uh, smooth rounded structure Good for cables and textured stitches so I'm planning to use this for a Clio which is a beautiful cabled pullover by Elizabeth Doherty Blueby Studio and uh, she had three different size samples at at the Curious Handmade Country House Retreat uh, which we all tried on and uh, sort of got to see which length and size would um, suit us so it's uh, nothing like being able to try on a sample um, before you commit to a, a sweater project is there so that was really good and um, can't wait to cast it on <sighs> not enough time I've got another sweater I need to finish first but uh, this will be soon very soon And so I think just a couple little bit more bits and pieces. This um, well, this isn't a bits bits and pieces really, but this is uh, the yarn from my good friend Anna from Sweden, and uh, she is Yarnesty on social media and Ravelry. Um, the designer previously known as Alpaca Anna. You might know her as Alpaca Anna on Instagram. Um, and she gave me this yarn that's a special Swedish um, yarn called from Jamtland Sheep. It's a little bit hard to say, but it's J-A-M-T 
L-A-N-D, Yamptland. Uh, so it's a special breed of sheep that was um, designed, or bred, designed, what am I like, bred, um, to be good for both meat and wool. Uh, and the wool is, it's really soft. It's really lovely. Uh, so this will be um, a nice amount of yardage for a nice shawl, I think. Um, so, yes future project. Lovely. Uh, she also gave me a scan of this um, this very very fun <laughs> sparkly crazy limo design hand dyed yarn which is a Swedish uh, indie designer, indie dyer uh, that's, a, that's a good friend of Anna's and this is super fun. It's called Fantasy World. Uh, so super bright. Um, and uh, two very sort of Scottish souvenirs. Uh, this is a bag from Little Grey Girl. Uh, she uh, makes beautiful project bags and um, fun notions. And uh, yeah, this is a really fun shape. It's kind of like a wedge shape project bag, perfect for a sock, a one scan project, a socker or shawlette. Um, and I just had to have one of those as a as a souvenir from from Edinburgh with the thistles. And I also ran into Tracy from Nora George, and she is so generous. Like she is one of the most generous um, indie dyers that I know. She uh, sent me no, gave me <laughs> at the festival. <laughs> didn't send me. Gave me uh, this skein that she dyed especially for the festival is called thistle uh, so you can see the the inspiration of the purples in that and the greens um, so that's just such a wonderful souvenir memory from Edinburgh um, she has a podcast called uh, crafts from the third floor or crafts on the third floor and the yarn is Nora George um, and yeah, she's doing very, very fun things with her, her, uh, yarn label. Thank you, Tracy. It was a really unexpected and lovely, lovely gift. So thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm very overwhelmed by, by your generosity. Um, so I think that's, that's the main thing. I, in terms of yarn, I did say that I was going to um, not buy too much yarn. Um, I didn't obviously buy all of that yarn. I did buy a reasonable amount, but I don't feel like it was out of control, crazy yarn shopping, which was good <laughs> because we don't want that, do we? So, um, and this was the, the bag that I, um, didn't buy at the festival, but ordered at the festival from Pink Hazel. And uh, she's a wonderful project bag maker. And uh, I didn't uh, visit her stall until the second day. And by that stage, these um, fabulous, um, fabulous, I don't think it's a bag, more of a, a bin um, or a basket perhaps. Uh, they were sold out, so I um, I ordered one because I really wanted wanted one. I have one already, and it's so handy for when you're knitting at home, which is when I'm mostly knitting at home. Um, but I did purchase two bags uh, as gifts for the girls, my daughters. Um, so Sophie is the pink girl, and Lexi is the blue girl, uh, and. <clears throat> And then I bought them each a skein of uh, Ginger Twist Studio, so chunky yarn. So this was for Lexi, and I bought them a toft alpaca pack of pom pom. They're so soft and fluffy. Um, and then Sophie's vibrant, vibrant pink. <laughs> so uh, yeah. This is a, a yarn label and shop in Edinburgh. 
so that's a nice um, a nice gift to bring back for the girls. And uh, now I need to make sure that I make time to sit down and, and knit it with them at some point soon. Um, maybe over the Easter holidays we'll get an opportunity to do that. Uh, so yeah, so, um, so I was quite chuffed with those bags. Uh, I think they're quite spoiled to have such beautiful project bags. Um, but yeah. if you can't enable your own children in, uh, in knitting, then, then who can you really? Uh, so that's, that's kind of it. I did buy a beautiful bangle, but I, that's upstairs. So I won't be able to show you that. Um, a few other little bits and pieces that I picked up. This was from Azolda. Azolda's uh, shop, um, Pussy Hat Project, little uh, memento. Um, I also spent some time at um, a, a shop called Beyond Measure, and she had the loveliest things um, in terms of haberdashery kind of things. This is a tape measure, so it's called the nose to tail tape measure, and it's got as you sort of go along the measurements, it's got animals the size of of that measurement. Um, so that's super cute. So I think that will do for um, showing showing purchases and acquisitions and things. Uh, I do have a few other things, but. Um, I think I think that's enough for one day. Uh, just before um, I finish up, I wanted to show you a project that I've talked about on the audio podcast quite a few times, and uh, people have asked me to show it on on a video. <laughs> so here here it is. Um, basically, it's quite timely because I started this project when I went to the Knitting Pipeline Retreat in Georgia two years ago, the first one I went to. And Paula Emmons Feasley has a design called the Magic Cake Ruffle Shawl. So we had so much fun making magic cakes, which is basically uh, cakes of yarn made up of scrap, um, scrap leftover yarn from other projects. And we all shared our leftover yarn and um, and made these magic cake balls uh, that are tied together with a magic knot, which is a special knot that doesn't come undone. And so I um, made quite good progress with my shawl. But then I had to be clever and decide to adapt the project. And I'm not sure what I was even thinking now because it was, you know, so some time ago, and I think I thought, I want a really extravagant ruffle on mine. <laughs> uh, because Paula has a nice, uh, sort of about an inch of ruffle. It's quite, um, it's quite refined. It's nice. Um, and I thought I just wanted something a bit more dramatic. But what I, whatever it was that I did which I can't quite remember, it, it's just, it didn't work. Because I think I added a lot of extra stitches around here to, because um, I thought, oh, well, it will need extra stitches to go around the corner. <laughs> Except that it just looks ridiculous. And so I did all this knitting, which is a gazillion stitches, uh, quite a few rows uh, of a ruffle and <clears throat> it just looks a bit crazy so I decided that it needs to come out but I just thought I'd show you that before I do that <clears throat> I'm just looking at it now wondering if it might be okay but I think it's too crazy what do you think Answers on a postcard. I think it's too crazy. So what I'm thinking is I'll I'll rip it back to 
maybe to I don't know I just popped in a little bit of lace there I'm not sure why um, so I'll probably rip it back to to the ruffle make the ruffle a lot smaller or maybe just have this as a border I don't know it's a bit sad isn't it I did think maybe I could just sew <laughs> sew this down if that just if all this extra wasn't there in the middle it would be perfect but as it is it's a bit hard to hide that in the middle of the back of a shawl all that extra all that extra fabric so I think it has to come out anyway but this is um so I just wanted to show that before I ripped back because I think it's gonna be lovely once once it's finished It's one of those things where um, it could conceivably just sit there for several more years um, and not me not do anything about because it was hours of work to knit that ruffle. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Uh, so yeah, so I did. I did kind of have ideas of doing that before the retreat and being able to take a finished magic cake ruffle shawl to the retreat that would have been lovely but um but not enough time and uh maybe next year we'll see so on that note i'm going to wrap wrap it up i um i hope you've had um had a good week had a good few months if you just watched the videos <laughs> been months since I last posted one um, it's uh, just the way it is with my videos they pop up from time to time um, I find it a bit more difficult to find a nice peaceful moment with decent light and um, feeling like I want to put myself in front of a camera uh, so yeah so thanks for watching and uh, I'll talk to you again at some point. Bye.